What's happening guys? Welcome back to the channel. Going to be going over my first ever golf tournament recap. That's what this video is all about. I got some notes on my right uh, so I can kind of go through some of the main key points I don't want to forget about. And then also I want to do a quick little catch up for everyone that might not know what's going on. Teamed up with Cameron McCormick out of Altus Performance. For you that don't know, he is Jordan Spieth's coach and one of the probably the top coaches in the game of golf in the whole world. So teamed up with him, have had a handful of lessons with him. Definitely need more. I've also worked with Corey. I've also worked with Andrew and Nick as well, all out of Altus Performance. And I highly suggest if you're looking at trying to get better in your golf game, check out their Instagram um, and check out their website. All that will be in the description down below because it's obviously has helped my game immensely. So after a couple lessons with Cameron, I've been just grinding a lot, trying to practice when I can, trying to play when I can. Haven't really been able to get in a good schedule yet. A lot of traveling the last couple months and then also this wedding preparation has really kind of hindered me to be able to just really wake up and just start grinding out my golf game, which I'm planning on doing here in the next couple weeks. So the game's kind of been up and down a little bit. Also the weather here in Dallas hasn't really helped that either. Some days it's freezing cold, it's snowing, it's hailing, it's doing all sorts of things which aren't great for the golf game. I've been playing into some pro-ams. The most recent one I just played in was the Genesis out at Riviera. We played with Jim Furyk, which was absolutely amazing. I played actually pretty well. I shot 69, two under from the white tees, I think. It was like 6,700 yards or so. Pretty good, I'll take that. Riviera was playing obviously tour conditions and as you saw, uh, a lot of the guys struggled with the course with the wind and the cold and stuff. And so uh, shooting that score I think was a huge confidence boost. Also doing it with a little bit of pressure with Jim there watching and a couple other people watching. That all, always is going to help the golf game. So that was awesome. I asked Jim, you know, basically when I play with these professionals I, I constantly am picking their brains because that's how I got good at Frisbee is I ask people better than me, what are you doing? That makes you better than me essentially and uh, I'm doing the same for golf and so I asked Jim hey if you could you know give me your best piece of advice to get better at this game you know someone that's trying to make it what would that be and his answer was simply play tournaments play tournament golf he said there's nothing like it and to get good tournaments will help you and also they'll also show you basically where your weaknesses are and what you need to improve on so I thought that was super helpful I actually got to participate in the Altus Ryder Cup which was an awesome awesome experience there I actually met with a man by the name of Matt Gilchrist and he has been super helpful in this whole kind of golf journey that I'm on right now um, he has current status on the web.com uh, and has been someone that's been in the golf game for a while and just really knows honestly so much knowledge not only about the game of golf but about tournament golf as well. We actually met up and sat down and he kind of just showed me the ropes of everything from uh, Q school to web to local tournaments to amateurs to mid-am to uh, the Texas Open just tons of knowledge that he basically gave over the course of an hour and I just try to soak it all in and basically what we left with was you need to start coming up with a tournament schedule that you are going to show up and play in these tournaments and get some actual tournament golf play in. He showed me the North Texas PGA. My first one was just now. I just finished my second day today. It started yesterday morning, went through round one, finished round two today, and now we're basically going to go and talk about the whole round and what I thought about it. All right, so Bridalwood, that is where the tournament was. Bridalwood, Bridal, Bridalwood Flower Mound, Texas. It's about a 30 minute drive away from me, so it took me a little bit to get out there. Can I use your phone? Yeah, why? Yeah, fine, why? Oh, it's right there. Hi, everybody! <laughs> oh my god. Goodbye, everybody! Okay. Bye, boys. Kelsey with the quick intermission. Okay, so Bridalwood is where the tournament was. I think it's 7,200 and like 50 yards, something like that. And it's the rating is like a 74 and a half. Pretty tough course very narrow and the conditions we were playing in made it even tougher. It was about 40 to 45 degrees. At one point it was hailing, constant kind of 
wind gusts and rain. It was not your ideal scoring conditions. The beginning of round one, I'm on the putting green, kind of getting my last few putts in and heading to the tee box to basically tee off. And we get to the tee box and the, the lady hands us the scorecard and the pin sheet and basically says, hey, I just want to let you know I'll hand you this stuff right now, but we're about to blow the siren. Uh, there's lightning. And I was like, oh, okay, great. First tournament, they're icing me right away. Then we went basically inside, sat inside for an hour for this little storm cell to go by. And I kind of asked the guys, I was like, what, you know, what do you guys do if this is the case? Like, do you go back out and hit ball? Like, what's gonna happen? They're like, well, they normally give you like half hour or so to kind of rewarm up and then you go back out there. So I was like, all right, cool. They gave us 14 minutes because the weather was so bad, they were trying to get us all out there as fast as possible and to get the round in before more of these storm cells came through. So we basically had 14 minutes to go back out, hit more range balls, putt a couple times to kind of warm up, and then boom, off to the first hole we go. This tournament, it's pretty much for professionals. Amateurs do enter. There were four amateurs in this tournament and 58 uh, professional golfers. Tony Romo was actually in this tournament, which was awesome. Out of the professionals, a lot of them have web.com, either conditional status, where they're not able to, you know, play in every web.com event. But there was also two players, there's a tweet right here that I'm gonna pull up. Two players in the top 100, Danny Lee and Italian Andre Pavin were also in the tournament. I didn't even know about this until three hours ago when this guy tweeted it out that we had two guys in the top, well I, I checked it because I wanted to make sure, I wanted to fact check before I threw this out there. And Danny Lee is ranked, I believe, 100 and Andrea pa or Andre Andre I think it's Andre Andre Pavin is now 101 so technically just outside the 100 but basically two phenomenal golfers are in this golf event as well which I didn't even know about but it's actually so cool day one let's get into the round itself I'm looking at my notes and this is basically something that me and Cameron are going to talk about on Sunday but this was what happened day one this is what I felt about my day one performance. I felt like I had great lag putting speed. I was happy that a lot of my lag putts were, was inside that three feet kind of window that we're looking for to make that second putt a little bit easier than having these testy four and five footers. I did have a hard time reading putts though inside of 15 feet. This is something where I think either working with Cameron out in the course or potentially even finding some other pros to play with that will actually help me kind of read greens. Today I felt like I was putting where I wanted the ball to go, but that wasn't the correct line. And so that was kind of frustrating and something I, I need to figure out, you know, how can I work on that to get better. I had a really bad miss on the par five hole six. Uh, that one was a tough one. Hole six is a pretty gettable par five. I, I don't know if I was just too juiced on the tee box or whatnot, but I, I yanked my driver left, which is a problem because my miss is normally right, and so now I'm kind of having this two-way miss, which is what you hear all the time pros talk about. They, they don't want to have that two-way miss off the, off the tee box. And I was starting to find myself in it. And normally when I'm playing by myself or with my friends or whatever, I step up to the tee and I let it rip. I don't think about it. And now as soon as I hit that first shot out of bounds, I, I could feel myself from every tee shot there on in, tightening up, getting nervous, looking at the tree line on the left and the right and being like, man, I need to not just find the fairway, I need to keep this ball in play. And that's something I've never felt before and something that definitely I need to overcome and, and figure out because that was a battle in the first round and you know, definitely something I'm trying to work for uh, to just free up that driver, man. That's one of my biggest advantages, my length off the tee. And if I can't, if I can't have that, it's gonna be difficult. So I did have multiple drivers in three woods that put me in bad spots where all I could do is punch out and not really attack the greens. I think there was four or five drives after that poor OB drive that I had. I ended up doubling that hole, by the way. Par five, doubled it, not great. A seven, you never wanna put that on the scorecard. Throughout the round, I had tons of drivers in three woods that were just offline, either left or right, and I was in the trees and had to punch out. One of them, I was, just almost in the water hazard and I was like on the cliff and so I had 
basically like a foot or two of room to step behind the ball to just kind of get a club on it. Had I just been a little bit more accurate and, and had a shot at the green, that would have probably saved me three or four shots just there. And like I was saying, the weather was bad. It was rainy, the course was very muddy. You know, just with those conditions, we're playing lift clean in place in the fairways. And when the course is like that, you gotta hit fairways because not only hitting in the rough are you now putting yourself kind of out of position to attack the green, your ball now has mud on it. Or your ball now is sitting in uh, some soggy grass or whatever it may be. When it's lift clean in place, now that I know just going through that round, you got to find the fairway so you get to clean your ball get the mud off of it, and give yourself a preferred lie. Looking now at the Golf Stat Lab, this is where I put all my stuff in. I shot a 75, hitting 28.6% of the fairways. That's what we were talking about when I only hit four fairways and I had a bunch of punch outs. Scrambling was 50% and I had 32 putts. Round one was a roller coaster, man. It was up and down. I had one, two, three. I had four birdies and I ended up uh, hitting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I hit 11 greens, four birdies, and that double with five bogeys. And I had a stretch between hole eight and hole 11 where I made bogey, 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 four bogeys in a row. And I could feel it, man. I could feel it after the second bogey going into the 10th hole. I was just like, ah, oh, man. And I just kept the train going versus getting off of it. I didn't three putt, which was good, but there was a lot of a lot of shorter putts, like I was saying, inside of 15 feet that I struggle with, and hence why the putting um, isn't essentially where you want it to be. That moves us up into round number two. So after day one, scoring wise, shooting three over, I was kind of like in the the bottom of the second third pack, I was tied for 40, uh, 41st, I believe. Tony Romo shot even par, so he beat my three shots if you're wondering. But I was, I was kind of in that middle group, you know, which is still good. I'm, for me right now, I'm just trying to kind of gauge where I stand among some of these guys and then ultimately it's all about my game and what can I do to improve. So going into day two, I was really, really focused on just trying to hit more fairways and keeping the ball in play to give me opportunities to score. Woke up at like five o'clock, got ready, went and headed to the course, uh, had to sit in my car and kind of just foam roll a little bit with my uh, Hypervolt, uh, waiting for it to get daylight and for the uh, range to actually open at seven o'clock. My tee time was at 7.50. I got a good practice session in, hit some good tee shots, felt pretty confident going into it, and boom, Headed off, day number two, T41, three over par. Day two recap, essentially, my lag putting was bad. <laughs> I had multiple shots today uh, where I was just short of the green. Um, it got really cold. It, it got to the low 40s. The wind started kind of picking up and there was a lot of moisture in the air. So I normally hit my seven iron like 200 yards and my seven iron was like coming up short on a 170 yard par three. So the ball just wasn't traveling and I don't think I ever really did a good job on some of these shots of gauging that and picking the right club and maybe even missing a little bit on the wind because I kept coming short on the fringe. And unfortunately those fringe lag putts just weren't there today. I left myself with a lot of uh, four, five, six footers, three footers, and over time, that grind of just having to make a four footer for par, or five footer for par over and over again, that's not what you're looking for. You're, you wanna get those putts close to where you're just tapping in, and I feel like I had like maybe one or two tap in putts all day. First hole, kinda of rushed my routine on the green. I had a bad putt, uh, it was about like a 24 foot putt off the green from the fringe. I left myself with maybe like a four footer, maybe a three and a half footer, and just kind of like didn't go through my normal putting routine and just straight up missed the putt. Just misread it, I guess, and just didn't even give it a chance to go in. So started my day off with a, with a bogey. There was a lot of times where I was over the ball 
thinking like, man, is a seven iron really the club I should hit here? And that's not really what you want. So that's one thing I'll take away from this tournament as well is do not stand over the ball until you're 100% committed with the shot you're gonna go for and then address the ball and take your shot and, and go for it. I had two big misses today. Yes, la Yesterday I had one big miss, today I had two big misses. One was on hole 15. We played the back nine first, so hole 15. Uh, I just straight up slice, uh, no. Hole 15, oh my gosh. Hole 15, hole 15 was the top. Yeah, hole 15, I topped my three wood straight into the water from 30 yards. Like legitimately, I told Kelsey on the phone about it and she's like, wait, you hit a Kelsey shot? We call it a Kelsey shot because she picks her head up a lot and so she tops the ball. And so I'm on this tee and I just, it was probably one of the more gettable par fours on the course and I just topped my three wood. So now I, here I am hitting three off the tee on this par four. So I ended up making double there. And then hole four was my other big miss. Another kind of short par four and looking back on it, I wish I would have hit a three wood and not a driver. I don't know why I pulled a driver there. It might have been one of those things where I just wasn't really feeling like I was getting that many opportunities in the round and so that was where I forced it and that was probably one of the worst things I could have done. You can't force it in golf, especially when the conditions are the way they are. You kind of just have to take what the golf course is giving you and I, I forced it and sliced one into the houses. So again, OB hitting three from the tee box. I doubled that hole. I tried to battle back from that but the putter was just not my friend today. I missed a four footer, I missed a seven footer and I missed a nine footer. Um, I was hitting a lot of balls to the middle of the greens today. A lot of the pin placements were not in great spots and so I was just hitting to the fat side of the greens and it left me with a lot of long putts which unfortunately made it very difficult for me to score low. One good thing from the round though that I can say was uh, hole number two. 536 yard par five, all uphill, into the wind. It was probably playing closer to 580 with the conditions. I hit a monster drive up there. The guy that was working for the tournament and kind of just checking in was sitting there on that hole and he basically was saying, hey, I've been here all day. This was the second longest drive I've seen all day. And he basically just told me no one's even come close to really reaching the green. It's all uphill, like I said. And uh, I think my shot was like two, I think I had like 245. And I was playing it at like 280. And so I take out my three wood and, and just pipe a three wood right at this pin that's on the front of the green to 15 feet, roll it in for eagle, boom, boom. I didn't do the shooter, I should have done the shooter, but rolled it in for eagle, that was great. I made birdie on uh, 18, which was also awesome. So now looking kind of at the statistics of it, I hit one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I hit eight fairways. So I hit twice as many fairways as the day before. So that's improvement. That was one thing I wanted to work on. However, I had two tee shots that cost me four strokes a day. And yesterday I only had one tee shot that cost me two strokes. So there's that. The greens, I wasn't, like I was saying, my club selection was way off. One of the par threes, I hit a four iron instead of a five iron and I flew the green thinking that it was playing way longer than it actually was. I ended up only hitting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I ended up only hitting, no, that's not right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. I ended up only hitting ten greens today, um, which isn't great. That's not what you want. And then I had 30 putts with one three putt that was a three putt for par, which you never like to see on a par five. So all in all, some very good shots over the weekend, or not even weekend, it was a Thursday, Friday tournament, but some very good shots, but also some very poor ones. Um, I need to figure out that big miss off the tee. Uh, I just need to get that out of the game and keep you know, the ball in play. That's the big thing. And I need to figure out some help reading the greens. Those were kind of my takeaways. I'm gonna take all this information that I just told you to Cameron on Sunday. We're gonna sit down, talk about it, work on some parts of my game. He's gonna give me what I need to basically grind out and work on. And um, I'm sure it'll be great. 
Looking at the tournament, man, I shot, uh, oh, I didn't even tell you, I shot 75, sorry, I shot, you're probably like, what'd you shoot? So, 75, 75, three over, three over, six over, I finished T41 uh, in the tournament, so ended up beating 21 people, I guess. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for some competition. Would I have liked to finish in the money? Yeah, if I could take those three shots that lost me six strokes away and just puts a ball out there anywhere, I would have done that in a heartbeat. But you know, this is why you play tournament play. You, you do this because you can learn a lot from it. It's one thing to go out and shoot 68, 69, 70, whatever, uh, when it doesn't count. It's another thing when every single stroke counts. You know, my big thing is I have to be okay with failing. In Frisbee, it took me three years. By freshman year, my sophomore year, and then like midway through my junior year, so I guess two and a half years. It took me two and a half years to really get the confidence in my ultimate Frisbee game um, to where I could just go out and know I was gonna dominate. I don't know how long it's gonna take me in golf, but I know I'll get to that point at some point. Will there be some ups and downs along the way? 100%. Will I potentially shoot 80? on Monday in my next tournament? Maybe, I don't know. The thing is, is I just gotta figure out what I can do to get better and then keep grinding and keep playing and you know, understanding it's gonna be a journey, but hopefully uh, at the end of it, it's gonna be a fun one to look back on and, and be happy that I gave it a shot versus sitting back and being afraid to fail. So if I could give you any advice from you know this tournament kind of experience, it's to be, okay with failure and, and not to be afraid of what people might say or anything. At the end of the day, it's all about, you know, how you feel about inside and how you feel. And, you know, my performance wasn't spectacular. I, I wish I could have shot closer to even par or maybe even under even par. I mean, it was there, especially on day one with how many uh, shots I, you know, made. But you live and you learn, man. All right, that's my tournament recap, guys. I'm gonna do a quick Q&A. So before filming this video, I threw up my Instagram story saying, ask away some questions for me about the tournament, anything you have, and uh, now I'm gonna answer some of those. So T. Mueller wants to know, how was the field of competition? Clearly it was really good. I'll post the link down below that you guys can kind of see uh, the top guys versus the bottom guys. You can see the whole results basically. At Norman wants to know what shoes were you rocking? I was rocking the Jordan 11 Retro Low Golf Concord. I want to make sure I said that right. I am going to be coming to the Players Championship B Grid. M Hale Three Y asks, "How real were the first T jitters?" So funny story. Opening uh, opening shot at the Genesis Pro Am at Riviera was the drivable par four uh, hole ten. I'm sure you guys had all seen that if you watched the tournament. And it was playing about 300 to 295 from RT Box. So I was going with a three wood and I almost missed the ball. I hit it on the toe. It hit like a pavilion on the right and I was like, oh my God, I was actually really nervous over the ball. That was the first time I ever really been nervous hitting a golf shot. Those nerves, I've noticed they get better. Like the first day yesterday, I was a little bit nervous. Today, not as much. So I think the more I play, you know, I'll still obviously get the butterflies because I love the competition, but I think the nervousness will kind of go away a little bit. Blaine, what was your most interesting hole? Probably the one that I topped my three wood into the water because the guys I were playing with, you could just tell they were just like, what? They were completely silent and I was just, I kind of just laughed it off. Um, but again, you know, that that's, that's kind of goes with the woes of not having that many shots under my belt. I'm gonna make those mistakes. It's gonna take some time uh, for those to get out of my system. But the sooner the better, I would hope. Caleb H21 wants to know what's your golfing goal. My golfing goal is to just reach my potential, man. To figure out where that is, at what level. I wanna know where my ceiling is, and then once I kinda of get to that ceiling, I wanna to try to do the best I can. So that I don't really have that goal yet. I do not know the answer to that question. My goal is to just freaking grind and get as good as possible. Ah, my boy Andrew Lewis Golf from Altus Performance asks, what did you learn about competitive golf that surprised you? Man. What did I learn that surprised me? I guess it was, it was probably, the, the biggest thing was probably just the fact of how tight I got on the tee. And the second guessing. 
You don't really second guess yourself that much when you're just out playing. You feel comfortable with the shot and you go. Now when every shot counts and, and you're seeing how people are doing around you and you're seeing yourself go up and down the leaderboard, the second guessing was in there. So I think that's just something that's gonna take practice and time and knowing like I've hit this 185 yard shot a hundred times before in these conditions. I mean, I just gotta do it again. I just have to execute it. Nicholas Krager asks, how have you only been playing for a short amount of time and already shooting even? Golf was a sport that came pretty natural to me as a kid. Uh, I played it, like I said earlier in the video, I played it when I was a kid growing up. Obviously having Cameron McCormick and the people at Altus Performance uh, giving me some help is a huge thing. I highly, highly recommend if you're trying to get serious or want to get better about golf to seek out advice from someone that knows what they're talking about. Like I said, Altus puts a lot of good drills and a lot of good kind of just tips that a lot of amateurs struggle with on their Instagram. So you can check that out as well. But yeah, grinding, practicing, man, just wanting to get better. We're gonna finish it up with this one. JT Dan Haas, how do you get in the zone competing in a sport you have never competed in? It doesn't take much, man. It honestly doesn't take much to get me locked in and fired up um, and wanting to compete. Pretty much anything you throw at my way, I'm gonna to wanna to compete and compete at the highest level possible. Right now, I don't have the tools. I don't have what it takes to compete in golf where I want to. I have it in here. My desire and passion to be competitive in golf is there. I just don't have the tools right now on the golf course to put me in a position to compete. And that's what I need to work on. From this tournament, I've got a lot of stuff that I think I need to work on. Cameron's gonna dial me in and kind of uh, make my focus specifically to the areas that we definitely need to work on. And we're gonna go from there. So thanks to everyone for throwing in the questions. Let me know if you guys enjoyed this kind of tournament recap. If you have more questions and stuff, I'll be answering comments down in the comment section down below. Uh, like this video if you enjoyed it and want me to do it for future tournaments. And if you haven't already subscribed, would love to get that subscription from you. Turn on that notification as well. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.